metal joining and welding processes. While it is not mandatory that the inspector be a qualified welder, any hands-on welding experience is beneficial. In fact, many welding inspectors are selected for these positions after many years in the welding field. History has shown that former welders make good inspectors. Another benefit of having experience with these welding methods is that the production welders have a great respect for the inspector and possessing this knowledge will help the inspector gain cooperation for of the welders and for the people involved in the fabrication operation. The welding processes we'll discuss will be the shielded metal arc welding, which is referred to as stick, the gas metal arc welding, referred to as MIG, flux core arc welding, gas tungsten arc welding, referred to as TIG, and sometimes you'll hear it referred to as Healy arc. Note that there are over a hundred different welding processes. But we're going to discuss these few because these are the one that's ones that are widely used in the welding field. Take a second and identify this process. This is the shielded metal arc welding process. As the welding arc progresses to the right, it leaves behind a solidified weld metal covered by a layer of converted flux referred to as slag. And know that the American Welding Society has developed a system to identify these electrodes. The letter E refers to electro. The next two digits and sometimes three digits refers to the tensile strength. And note that the 70 is 70,000 pounds per square inch, which is the minimum tensile strength rely, required. The next position would be the one. This lets me know I could weld in all positions except vertical down. If I want to weld vertical down, I change the one to a four. The next digit is the eight, which is the coding and operating characteristics. And when they're referring to operating characteristics, they're referring to the polarity you could run. And with this electro, the E7018, the eight lets me know I could weld alternating current and DC electro positive, which is referred to as reverse polarity. And note that it is important to note that rods that are in and in 5, 6, and 8 are low hydrogen electrodes. And any low hydrogen electrode which are not to be used immediately should be placed in a holding oven as soon as the air attack container is open. Most codes require that low hydrogen electrodes be held at a minimum oven temperature of 250 degrees Fahrenheit at the removal from their seals or containers. One of the limitations of shielded metal arc welding is the speed. It is a slow process and the electrodes that are being used are usually 9 to 18 inches long and you have to constantly remove and change these electrodes. And also you have the potential with this electrode to get porosity and arc blow. And there's many methods to eliminate arc blow, arc blow or reduce it. First change from DC to AC, hold a shorter arc length, reduce welding current, angle the electrode in a different direction, use heavy tack welds, weld toward the heavy tack, use a back step technique, weld away from the work connection to reduce back, uh, back blow, weld toward the work connection to reduce forward blow. Attach the work cable to both ends, or you could wrap the work cable around the workpiece. That would help uh, reduce the magnetism. Since shielded metal arc welding is a primary accomplished manually, there are num numerous discontinuities that can occur. You can get incomplete fusion, you can get incomplete joint penetration, cracking, undercut, overlap incorrect weld size and improper weld profile. And there's other discontinuities you can get, lack of fusion and others. But we'll discuss that later on through the discussions. Take a second and identify this process. This process is called gas metal arc welding, which, re which is referred to as MIG welding. 
And the American Welding Society has also developed a system for identifying these electrodes. Let's take a second and identify. The first two letters, which is the ER, which stands for an electrode or rod. So this can be used as an electrode or wire. The next two numbers refers to the strength. As similar to the 7018, it's 70,000 pounds per square inch. It's the minimum tensile strength. The letter S lets me know that's a, that's a solid piece of wire. And the next position is the chemical composition. With gas metal arc welding, there are four basic modes of metal transfer. The hottest type transfer is spray, then you have gobbler, pulse, and your coldest type transfer is your short circuit. Take a few seconds and look at the diagram below. Your hottest type transfer spray can be achieved when using at least 80% argon. Argon CO2 is probably the most popular gas used when welding carbon steel using a gas metal arc welding process. Then you have the gobbler type transfer, which is almost as hot as your spray, but its operating characteristics tends to be less stable, resulting in increased spatter. And your coldest type transfer is your short circuiting type transfer, results in the least amount of heat to the base metal making it an excellent choice for welding of sheet metal and joints having excessive gaps due to poor fit up. The short circuiting type transfer method is characteristically cold due to the electrode actually coming into contact with the base metal, creating a short circuiting for a portion of the welding cycle. Take a few seconds and identify this welding process. This welding process is referred to as flux core arc welding. The American Welding Society has developed a system for identification for flux core arc welding electrodes. With this identification system, it can be determined whether or not a certain classification of electrode requires an auxiliary shielding gas. This is important to the welding inspector since flux core arc welding can be performed with or without an external shielding gas. To identify this type of electrode, the E stands for electrode, the 7 stands for the tensile strength, which is 70,000 pounds per square inch, that's the minimum tensile strength, and the next number, which is the 1, is the welding position, lets you know you can weld in all positions, and the T is tubular, which lets you know that this is a flux core wire. And the last number, which is the six, which is a chemical composition, also the operating characteristics. Some electrodes are formulated to be used without any additional shielding gas other than that contained within the tubular electrode. They are designated by the suffix three, four, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, thirteen, 11, 13, and 14. However, those electrodes having suffixes 1, 2, 5, 9, or 12 require some type of external shielding gas to aid in protecting the molten metal. Take a few minutes and identify this welding process. This welding process is referred to as gas tungsten arc welding, also known as TIG or Healy arc. The American Welder Society has developed a system for identifying the gas tungsten arc welder, which is the same electrode that is used for MIG welding. The ER stands for electrode rod. The 70s stands for tensile strength, which is the minimum tensile strength, 70,000 pounds per square inch. And the S lets you know that that's a solid wire. And the 6 is the chemical composition. 
This rod typically have increased amounts of deox deoxidizers, such as magnesium, silicon, and aluminum to help avoid the formation of porosity. Trying to weld without these deoxidizers would cause porosity. When TIG welding, filler metal must be added externally, usually manually, or with the use of some mechanical wire feed system. All of the arc and metal shielding is achieved through the use of gas, usually an inert gas such as argon or helium, but other non-inert gases can be used, such as CO2 or oxygen, which flows out of the nozzle surrounding the tungsten electrode. The deposited weld bead has no slag required removal because no flux is being used. As with other welding processes, there is a system to identify various types of tungsten electrodes, which is a non-consumable electrode, which can easily be identified. For example, EWTH-2. The E stands for electrode. The W is the atomic symbol for tungsten. The TH is thorium. And the 2 is 2% 2 thorium, which is red. The presence of thorium and zirconium adds to the improving of the electrical characteristics by making the tungsten slightly more emissive. It is easier to ignite an arc with the thorium and zirconium types than it is the case with pure tungsten electrodes. Pure tungsten electrodes, which is green, is quite often used for welding aluminum because of its ability to form a ball when heated. TIG welding produces wells of high quality and excellent visual appearance. No flux is used, the process is clean, and there is no slag removal after welding. Extremely thin sections can be welded down to five thousandths of an inch. Due to the nature of its operation, it is suitable for welding most metals, many of which are not easily welded using other welding processes. If joint design permits, these materials can be welded without the use of additional filler metal, known as autogenous wells. In the case where there is no commercial available wire for a particular metal alloy, it is possible to produce a suitable well metal by simply shearing a piece of identical base metal to produce a narrow piece which can be hand fed as if it was a piece of welding wire. Contrasting these advantages are several disadvantages. First, TIG is among the slowest welding processes. It produces a clean weld deposit and has a low tolerance for contamination. Therefore, base metal must be extremely clean prior to welding. TIG, when used as the manual process, requires a high skill level where the welder must coordinate the arc with one hand while feeding the filler metal with the other. TIG is normally selected in situations where the need for very high quality wants additional costs to overcome these limitations. Problems associated with TIG is its inability to tolerate contamination. If contamination or moisture is encountered, whether from the base metal, filler metal, or shielding gas, the result could lead to porosity in the deposited well. When porosity is seen, checks should be made to determine the source of contamination so that it can be eliminated. Another problem with TIG is tungsten inclusion. This discontinuity occurs when pieces of tungsten electrode become deposited in the well, which will show up in the x-ray as white spots. Tungsten inclusion can occur due to a number of reasons, and several are listed below. Contact of tungsten electrode tip to the molten metal exceeding the current the amps limit for a given electrode diameter or type, exceeding the tungsten electrode beyond the normal distance from the collet, result, resulting in overheating the tungsten, loose collet, which creates more heat on the tungsten from due to resistance, not enough shielding gas flow rates or excessive wind drafts resulting in oxidation of the tungsten, splits or cracks in the tungsten electrode, improper shielding gas, improper grinding of the tungsten electrode, 
and there are also other things that can cause problems. Let's take a few minutes and discuss AWS D1.1 Structure Steel Prequalifications of WPSs. WPS stands for Well Procedure Specification. Note that AWS D1.1 is a code, and by law, all codes must be available to the public. So if you would like a copy of AWS D1.1, the link is listed above. The welding processes that are pre-qualified is shielded metal arc welding, known as stick, submerged arc welding, gas metal arc welding, except for gas metal arc welding of the short circuiting type transfer, and flux core arc welding, which conform to all of the provisions of Section 3, shall be deemed as pre-qualified and therefore to prove for the use without performing WPS qualification tests for the process. For WPS pre-qualification, conformance with all of the applicable provisions of Section 3 shall be required. C 3.1 And note that there are limitations of WPS variables. All pre-qualified WPSs to be used shall be prepared by the manufacturer, fabricator, or contractor as written pre-qualified WPSs and shall be available to those authorized to use or examine them. The written WPS may follow any convenient format, CNXE, for example. The welding parameters set forth in four in one through four of this section shall be specified in the written WPSs within the limitations of variables prescribed in table 4.5 for each applicable process. Changes in these parameters beyond those specified in the written WPS shall be considered essential changes and shall require a new or revised pre-qualified written WPSs. Changes outside of the amperage range, the voltage, the travel speed, shielding, gas flow rate, and other parameters. Let's have a look at legend for figures 3.3 and 3.4 to have a better understanding of the joint designation. Symbols for joint types. B stands for butt joint, C corner joint, T T joint, and so on. Symbols for the base metal thickness and penetration. The P is partial joint penetration. The L is limited thickness. The U is unlimited thickness. The symbols for weld types. The 1 is a square groove. The 2 is a single V groove. The 3 is a double V groove. The 4 is a single bevel groove. Then you have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, next is the symbols for welding processes, if not shielded metal arc welding, or if not stick. The S is submerged arc welding, the G is gas metal arc welding, the F is flux core arc welding. Then you have the welding processes. Shielded metal arc welding, stick, then you have MIG, flux core, and sub arc. Also you have the welding positions. The F stands for flat, the H horizontal, the V vertical, the H is overhead. Then you have dimensions, the uppercase R which is the root opening, the angle sign, which is the groove, which refers to the groove angles. The lowercase f is the root face. Then you have the R, which stands for the radius of a J or U joint, and so on. But what, what, but what confuses people, I think, the most is the joint designation. The lowercase letters, for example, A, B, C, D, etc., are used to dif differentiate between joints that would otherwise have the same joint designation. But I'll explain this better in the next slide. As mentioned in the previous slide, we'll discuss one of the joint designations. Let's discuss B-U4A. The letter B indicates the joint type, which is a butt joint. Following the B is the letter U, which indicates that the well can be used with materia of unlimited thickness as opposed to the letter L, which would indicate that the well is only appropriate within a range of thickness. And P is partial joint penetration. Okay, following the U is the number four, which lets you know that this is a single bevel groove. And following the number four is the lowercase letter A, 
which is used to differentiate between joints that would otherwise have the same joint design. So this small lowercase letter a lets you know that this joint design will have a backing. If it had the letter B, it would have no backing. So that's the difference. So the A lets you know that you will have a backing and the B will let you know that you will not have a backing. So if you look on the AWS D1.1 and you see B-U4B, lowercase b, that means that that joint designation do not have a backing.